So in our catechism studies, a word that we come across quite a lot at the beginning of the catechism, which is something I always have to explain, uh, is the word organic. So the church is an organic reality. Whenever I ask people, what does that mean? When we, when we hear that the church is, is, is an organic reality, uh, what does that mean? People seem to go, oh, we like the environment and we recycle and we like you know, biodegradable vegetables and whatever else. No, uh, organic, if we, if we talk about the church being organic, it has nothing to do with recycling and nothing to do with vegetables. Uh, what it means is it's composed of organs. It's composed of organs. So we have certain people within the church whose job is to administer and or certain people in the job who's in the church whose job is, is to be missionaries or to be, you know, uh, to, to work in governance, to have hidden vocations, contemplative sisters, and then there are you know, missionary out there kind of preachers and teachers. People's jobs are different, but it all works together to serve the purpose, the greater purpose, to serve the church, to serve the Lord. Not everyone has to do the same thing in order to be relevant or valid. In fact, we need people doing different things. You know, you need organizers to organize things. You need your fundraisers to fundraise. You need your preachers to preach. Um, if you've got people who are really good preachers but terrible organizers doing the organization, things will go to pot like. I mean, people have to work to their strengths within the church, which is fantastic. You think again of the organic reality, the organ reality of the body. Right? The, blood is fil- the, the blood is filtered by the liver, but the filtering of the blood by the liver serves every organ. It now means you've got pure blood or clean blood in your heart, in your brain, in your toes, right? The liver is serving the whole body. The lungs oxygenate the body, oxygenate, oxygenate the blood for the whole body. Even the hands, like the hands lift the food from the plate to the mouth, which serves the whole body. They also protect you if you're falling, put your hands out to protect the whole body. None of these organs work for themselves. Whatever they do, when they do it well, it serves the whole body. It serves the whole body. And so it is in the church. So, so it is in, 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 in uh, our first reading here. Uh, St. Paul to the Romans, he writes, uh, As all of us, in union with Christ, the head, he's the head, form one body, and as parts of it we belong to each other. Our gifts differ according to the grace given us. If your gift is prophecy, then use it as your faith suggests. If administration, then use it for administration. If teaching, then use it for teaching. Let the preachers deliver sermons. Let the almsgivers give freely. Let the officials be diligent. And those who do works of mercy, do them cheerfully. Everyone is doing their different thing. And it's all good and it's all necessary. And it's not that, like just because someone has a, a, an administrative role or someone's a bishop that suddenly they're seriously more important. Everyone, everyone's role is necessary. Unless you have the spleen. No, hang on, the spleen is necessary. The appendix. No one needs an appendix. That's just a time bomb. Who needs a time bomb? Anyway, that aside. Uh, everyone, everyone in the body... Everyone in, in this organic reality needs to do their part in order for the, for the whole body to function. Everyone needs to do their part. And that means that no one needs to look at anybody else and say, you know, it would be great if I was a preacher or a teacher or an administrator or a bishop or a priest or whatever it is. What's your job? What do you bring? What do you bring to the church? Bring that faithfully. Bring that consistently, and then you're doing your job. And by all means, we can be inspired and should be inspired by the virtue of others. You someone who, who prays very well, or someone who's you know, very generous, or someone who's very serving, and you think, maybe I could be a bit more like that. Great, by all means. But it, we don't need to be vocation hopping, or, or, or presuming that the only way we can make a difference in the church is to be priests or religious. That's, that's, that's just completely untrue. We serve the church where the Lord has placed us by doing what the Lord has given us within the realm of our ability to the great, for the greater glory of God. That's how we serve. So then all the different organs do all of their different things. And maybe yeah, people think that the brain is the most important. The brain couldn't do much unless it had oxygenated blood from the lungs, unless that blood was pured, purified by the liver, and unless that blood was given its nutrients through the stomach and digestive system. It all works together. You take any one of those elements out, you're dead. Okay, all those parts are necessary. So I was thinking about this as regards how, maybe on a slightly kind of broader level, how we view each other and how we work together as a community, you know? And I think that the, the, the glue, there are many ways of expressing this, but I'll just focus on one today. Uh, the, the glue that, that, that holds us together 
in the church, and especially here in Holy Family, should be friendship. Right, friendship. So, again, you can call it love as well. It's a similar idea. It's the same, same kind of thing. Uh, friendship. So, when I see another person, another person in, in, in the community, that they're, they're, they're part of my body. They're, they're part of this organic reality of our community. So they bring something. They bring something. They may be different to me. They may be different to the person beside them. But they bring something. Everyone brings something. You know, even if it's just their, their joy, even if it's their, if it's their, their some, some talents will be more evident, you know, singing or organizing, whatever. But everyone brings something. Everyone, the Lord has you here for a reason. So what should unite us then is, is friendship. And I heard something recently which I found so, so simple and incredibly helpful to understand the dynamic of friendship. Because the friendship isn't just... Uh, t- today the word friendship is very much impoverished, you know. It has become very poor because of maybe friends and likes and all this kind of thing on, on social media. Uh, the, the idea of friendship can be very, very superficial. It's just someone who knows my name and I liked four of their pictures last year. So we're friends. <laughs> like that's such a poor understanding of friendship. Where the, the Lord says, Jesus says, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. This is Jesus saying to his disciples, I call you friends. So in his mind, in Jesus' mind, friendship is a very, very pure and loving form of, of, of a relationship. It, it, it's, it's a loving relationship. Friendship is, in, in the Lord's mind, uh, as I say, is, is a, a, a very, very beautiful interaction between people. Okay. And the, what I heard during the week, which I found very helpful, is friendship is not about getting what I want, but about giving what you need. I, I had to chew on that for a while. Friendship isn't about getting what I want. So uh, even this whole horrible thing, this yeah, awful expression like friends with benefits. We won't go into details. I presume that means they're friends that you kind of sleep with on occasion. Um, so this kind of really superficial idea of friendship, right? So friendship isn't about getting what I want. So my friendship with you serves me because maybe you're my arm candy or maybe you make me feel good about myself because I'm after hooking, hooking a good girl or a beautiful girl or whatever it was. Uh, or the other way around, like maybe a girl wants a particular kind of guy who, who serves her emotional needs. Uh, so basically, I'm in this friendship, I'm in this relationship because you serve me. You serve my needs. So I get what I want from you. Works both ways. But that's not friendship. Friendship is about giving what you need. And I found this really interesting to think about. Think about like, as regards certain friends, as regards maybe how I behave as well. Is that this idea of see a need, fill a need. When I see that a person is down, when I see that a person is in need, do I say, no, oh, pity for them. Must be hard. Pizza. You know? Or do I say, well, they have a need. So because I'm their friend, I, what can I give? What can I give to serve their need? So rather than even waiting for them to ask or waiting for them to take the initiative or you know, waiting to be kind of cornered that I have no other way out than helping them, I, I choose to take the initiative. I, 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 I'm not passive in this whole thing. I choose to go to them and serve their need. You know, that's a beautiful way of thinking of friendship. Not getting what I want, but giving what they need. And the interesting thing about this is like, this is completely transferable in any healthy form of friendship. So normal friendship, then boyfriend-girlfriend kind of friendship, then marriage, same kind of idea. I don't marry you because you serve my needs. I marry you because I, I want to serve your needs. I want to give you what you need. As a priest, I don't become a priest because the parish serves my needs or the church serves my needs because I want to give what the Lord has given me for the, for the needs of those in front of me. Even when it comes to God, I don't deepen a friendship or relationship with God because I want stuff from him. I want my work to be blessed. I want to be healthy. I want to get married. can't find anyone at the moment, so I'm going to pray. So all these kind of things. And I, I, my relationship with God is basically 
rooted in him serving my needs. So me getting what I want from him. Rather than, and we have to kind of understand this one correctly, rather than giving God what he needs. Now, okay, strictly speaking, God needs nothing. But at the same time, in his church, he does ask us to do something for him. Go make disciples of all nations. So he does want something from us. Strictly speaking, as I say, God needs nothing. But at the same time, he entrusts the church to us and wants us to further the church's mission. So in that way, we can kind of say that, the, that God needs us in a way. Well, God chooses to need us, maybe is, is more accurate. Either way, it's just a, a very healthy, it's a wonderful way of understanding friendship of our relationship with God, our interpersonal relationships as well. In these relationships, Am I trying to get something for myself? Is it about getting what I want? Or is it about giving what the other needs? Giving them what they need, though it may cost me, though it may give me nothing in return. This is, this is how, how the Lord understands friendship. You know, it's a, this loving relationship, a loving relationship, a deep relationship between people. So we ask the Lord today in our organic reality of this community or of the church that we can use whatever gifts he has given us for the building up of his kingdom that we can use them not to to get what we want but to give others to give the lord what he needs amen